Hi guys, Paul here, and this is going to be part two of the video series on the NAS32 flight controller in conjunction with the D4R2 FreeSky uh, receiver and also the Tyrannus radios and how you get it all up and running and working together. So what we're going to do in this video is run through uh, wiring up the NAS32 and configuring the D4R2 receiver and uh, then we'll touch a little bit on the uh, updating the firmware etc which is something that you're going to have to do. So first things first, this is the NAS32 board that we actually soldered up in the uh, previous uh, video. And the only change I've made is I had this wire soldered on like so, and I've flipped it over and soldered it this way. It just makes a lot more sense. The headers are on there, the soldering's nice and neat, and she's pretty much good to go. So the other thing we're going to need is obviously the FreeSky D4R2 receiver. Um, this is a really good little receiver. I've got another video on it in terms of how to update the uh, firmware. So you may want to have a look at that if you do need to update the firmware. And you're going to be running uh, more than four to six channels or thereabouts. I think I'm running six channels on this one. I'm not sure. Um, so it might be worthwhile actually updating the firmware. That's going to be a call that you're going to have to make. Um, we're going to be using the data cable. And this will allow us to uh, grab telemetry data off the NAS32 board. And the only wires we're going to be using here is the black and the green wire so they're the only two wires that we'll need to use actually if you look very carefully i've got the uh, jumper in place for uh, channels four and channel three and what this will do is actually put the d4r2 in cppm mode which will allow us to then just run it by connecting up just in one cable uh, it just makes life so much easier and that'll go to uh, port one or channel one like so and that's pretty much it all uh, together. So what I've done with the uh, CGX250 over here is I've actually cut these two wires down because I don't actually use these ones. I've cut them quite short. So the only wires we're going to be using is the green and the black wire. And we'll run through exactly how this is set up. So what we're going to do now is just run through the actual wiring, how I've got this all wired up. Now this first servo connector that you can see here, I'm only using the brown wire and also the red wire. And that's connected directly to my power distribution board, which is basically connected to my uh, battery. That goes into the first connector. And as stated in the previous video, uh, black is always on the outside. So we've got negative followed by positive, and that's connected there. Now the next port, now this is coming straight from my buzzer. This is my buzzer cable. And that connects up into the next port. That goes like so. And finally, as stated before, we've got our green and black wire, which is coming from the data port on the D4R2 receiver. And that will connect up on the final connector. So that's pretty much it wired up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is run through wiring up the ESCs, as in your motors, directly to the NAS32 flight controller. Now, this one, now this is the front of the multi rotor, so keep that in mind. This is motor number one, motor number two, three, and four, and that's the sequence we're going to connect them up. And they're going to correspond to um, motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. Okay? Now the first ESC is providing all three uh, wires uh, connected to the actual flight controller. So we've got our negative, we've got our positive, and we've got our signal wire. With the rest of the ESCs, number two, number three, and number four, they're only providing the um, the positive wire, the power wire is actually disconnected. I've actually chopped that off. So that they're only providing the, um, the ground and also the signal wire. That's all that's actually connected to the flight controller. Now there are a couple of other ways of actually wiring this up, but I'm not gonna go through those. I'm only gonna cover what I've actually done in mine in a later video. I'll give you some other options in terms of how to power the board, etc. So that's the basic wiring up of your flight controller to your multi-rotor. Next step will be actually plugging this into your computer and then obviously doing the uh, firmware update on your NAS32 flight controller, which is what we'll cover next. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is basically plug in the USB connector or the micro USB into the NAS32 board. And then from there, what we're going to do is plug it into the computer like so. 
Obviously, this message won't come up for you. It's only come up for me because I'm running uh, this on a Mac and I'm running VMware and I'm running Windows 7 under VMware. So basically, I'm going to select Windows. Now, what I've done is already gone through and installed Google Chrome. So make sure you've, you've done that. And once you install Google Chrome, you can come down here and select, where is it? There it is. So I've got base flight and clean flight, but for now we're going to stick with base flight. Click on base flight. And what it'll do, I can try and select connect. Now this is most likely what's going to happen to you when you try and do this. Click on connect and it's come up with a message saying uh, it's unsupported because you've got an old version of the firmware. If you do need to later on update to a newer firmware, you can do it via this screen and the process is going to be pretty much the same. So we're going to do this now. We're going to update the firmware. So flash firmware and we've got a few options. You can load firmware locally if you happen to have it or in this instance we're going to load the uh, firmware from online. So it's basically loaded the firmware from online and now it's just a matter of flashing it. So we'll select flash. And the process doesn't take very long at all. You're watching this in real time at the moment. And there we go, the firmware's being flashed and she's pretty much good to go. So we'll try and connect to it and we've connected to the board, no drums whatsoever. Uh, if you've got your board sitting flat, you'd probably do this only on your multi rotor you could actually calibrate the accelerometer. And there you go, it's calibrated it. So we've got a few um, tabs here and I'm going to go through and, and show you basically what some of these do. We've got your configuration tab. This is where you can make some changes um, as far as your throttle settings, etc. You can switch on and switch off some features. PID tuning is done through this tab. Um, receiver settings. This is where you would adjust uh, your receiver settings, um, your throttle midpoint, your expo, RC rates, etc. Um, this is where you would actually program your switches, as in your auxiliary switches on your radio. Uh, if you want to go into, say, for argument's sake, horizontal mode, etc., switch the beeper on, and so on and so. Um, we won't worry about that. GPS, I haven't got GPS on this. It's an acro board, so there's not much point touching bases on that at the moment. Motor testing, we'll touch on this shortly because we can do the ESC calibration through this interface. Um, Login, I won't worry about these at the moment. And CLI commands. Now, I want to just show you something here, just so you're aware of it. They've left the CLI command option available, even though you don't appear to have to use it at the moment. But we will go through and I'll show you exactly how the CLI works. Go back to setup. Sorry, if we look at the configuration, you can see only one item is actually switched on at the moment, okay? So we'll go back over here. Now traditionally what I used to do with the previous version is I'd switch on certain features. So I'd go feature. And that will switch PPM on. Uh, that switches the VBAT switches on the uh, battery monitoring. Motor stop. Um, so basically when you arm the aircraft the props don't automatically start spinning. And finally and we want to switch on telemetry. Now if I get out of this, it'll actually automatically save it. Actually wrong tab, but it doesn't matter. It's saving and rebooting the board. And if you come over here, you can see what it's actually done. It's actually switched on those settings. So it looks as though all the CLI commands are now available, or most of them are available through this main uh, configuration page. Um, one of the other cool things you can do is um, your this is the board alignment. Save. And what that's actually done now is align the board so it rotates 90 degrees. Now this can be handy sometimes if you don't want to be going in the direction of the board as indicated by the arrow on the PCB board. Um, and instances of that would be where you can't access the USB port on the NAS32. 
Uh, looking at my quadcopter, this is the CGX250. I've got no real dramas uh, accessing the USB port. I can get in there quite easily, so that's not an issue at all for me. But if we have a look at Thomas's Minion, it's really hard to get to this uh, USB port. It's just too tight. Um, you need a specialized cable, and it's just a pain in the butt to try and get in. So by doing this rotation, it means now the forward direction of the board has been rotated 90 degrees clockwise, and it means we get side access now to the USB port. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, you can do CLI commands if you used to use in CLI commands, and you can also do it through uh, this interface. This is the first time I've actually done it through this interface because um, I'd used a previous version of uh, Base Flight, and basically all these changes were done through CLI. This looks like a much better option, so just keep that in mind. You can do it both ways. I think even if you go to the CLI now, um, you can see the features that I've switched on, which was the um, PPM, VBAT, motor stop, and telemetry. And if we go back here, I can go back into the configuration, switch off, say, PPM. And if I go back into the CLI and type in feature, uh, you can see PPM has been switched off. I'll just get back out of there and switch PPM back on again because we're going to need that, especially if we're using a D4R2 receiver. Uh, where is it? There we go. And save. And from there, what we'll do in the next video, we'll actually go through programming the radio and we'll touch bases on the PIDs, but um, we really need to get the um, uh, this sort of stuff happening in the next video. So I'll do that in the next video so this way it doesn't drag out too long. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, please thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoy this video and want to see more. And I will catch you guys later.